Tyler is an incredibly talented surfer. She was someone that everyone would look to as, OK, here comes a future world champion. I knew from a very young age I could win a world title. But I just wasn't ready. I didn't want to win a world title and not know who I was. She surfed so well, but it was definitely a headspace that was missing. And yeah, it took her a few years to figure it out, but it wasn't long. Tyler Ryan. When Tyler put that stake in the sand and declared to the world, I'm going after a world title, my initial response is hallelujah, because this girl has everything she needs to achieve it. Tyler had a chance to go home and I asked her to stay because I felt like something would happen. World Championship contender Owen Wright has been taken to hospital after a heavy wipeout in practice for the Pipe Mile Masters. He was crying, but he was going in and out of consciousness. When that happened, I was like, wow, this is really serious. Tyler was by Owen's side from day one of his recovery. There was always a possibility that she wouldn't compete after Owen's injury. And she went, what do I need to do here to be the best sister I can to my brother and get him through this? I grew up in a little town called Colborough Beach. It's on the south coast in New South Wales. It's a very small village. We all helped each other out. All the families helped each other out down there. It's such a great place. There's five of us kids in the family. And we had a street with 15 kids that surfed in it. Mikey. Tyler at the back. From a young age, mum and dad were always like, you have to learn how to swim and read the ocean and read what Mother Nature is doing. What a nice way for dad. I figured that if I could get the kids hooked on surfing, we wouldn't have to go and play cricket and basketball and go and do all these other sports. I travelled up last night and stayed at Crescent Heads, slept inside the van, head to toe. Every January from when I was about 11, we did about three pro juniors. I guess for Tyler, being four of five kids, it's like you're in a heat every time you're in the water. So they won't let up on each other. You've got to go the biggest wave, you've got to pull in, try the biggest turns. And in the girls' search under 12 boys final, the winner, Owen Wright. Owen was extremely competitive, you know. As a junior, Owen was unbeatable. And then Tyler just sort of followed in those footsteps. Ladies and gentlemen, the champion is Tyler Wright. <laughs> Tyler, gee, you're gonna have uh, more trophies than your brother Owen soon, hey? What is he getting jealous? Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> A largely unknown schoolgirl has upset world champion Stephanie Gilmore in the third round of the Beachley Classic in Sydney. At the age of 14, Tyler won a world tour event at Manly. Well, there's Tyler Wright. Not waiting for anything. Tyler's in the league. 525 and a 575. I mean, she had no fear. She didn't look at me like I was a world champion. Tyler Wright. To win an event at 14 was just a whole nother level. And that was definitely the first moment that Tyler Wright came onto the scene for everybody, for myself and for everybody. 14 years old, it's pretty good. Has to be the highlight of my life so far. Of course, I had a great chance to speak to Tyler after I handed her $20,000 and went, thanks for putting us all to shame. Now go back to school, kid. The entire Wright family, they're all really good surfers, but Owen and Tyler specifically had that little bit extra to take them to that world stage. Owen joined the World Tour when he was just 20 years old. Owen Wright has caused the biggest upset at Bells Beach by knocking out champion Kelly Slater. Tyler became the youngest ever female to qualify 
at 16 years of age. The girl is just tearing this place apart. She came out straight away and ended up um, number four in the world. Yeah, it's um, definitely a great start. I couldn't be more happy, you know. But I guess also too, people were wary of like, she is so young. 16, you're sort of almost still a kid. You gotta be mindful of that, of how she grows up on tour. When Tyler qualified to get onto the world tour, I found that Owen really looked after Tyler. It's just a different, a whole different ball game. Like, there's media, there's lots of people. All of a sudden, everyone's 10 years older. I was being pulled in every single direction. And like how people told me to look, what to wear, that I had to worry about. I became very body conscious in a lot of ways. I did not like what it was making me become. I did not like that. She'd show up to events, didn't care. She win a heat, wasn't smiling. It just, just you could just see that she wasn't happy in that. And then you make a mistake, and then you know there's so much scrutiny on that one mistake from other people, and then you've got to deal with yourself. This was actually where she ended up getting uh, beached on the rocks. Yeah, and this is where she corked that thigh of hers or her knee. At the end of my second year, I unofficially quit. I was so burnt out of going up and down, having these massive highs and these massive lows because I won or lost a heat. I just wanted to be steady. With all the talent and everything that she had, and, and she just wasn't enjoying it. And I think that was maybe a, a recipe of coming on too early. I was looking at her and I was like, something's not right. She's not as bouncy, she's not as Tyler. She's a little bit lost. I was staying in a different place from her and I drove around to her place and I was like, look, you probably don't want to talk about it, but you don't have to talk, I'll talk. <laughs> and then you listen. He said, you don't have to do this. You're 18 years old. You do not have to have a career in professional surfing. And it was the first time I've ever heard that. And nobody ever told me that I didn't have to do it. And just because I was really good at it doesn't mean that I loved it. Just a good, really good conversation between brother and sister. And, you know, we both have gone through a similar thing. She was at a much younger age though. So it was, um, it was cool. She. I feel like she just like takes those conversations and just runs with them. <laughs> For the next six months, she didn't surf once. I was always trying to get her to come surfing with me, but a lot of the time she's like, nah, like, nah, like would never surf. At that time, I had no interest in prioritising surfing. I prioritised learning about me. I wanted to grow up before I decided to go for a world title. When I came back after the six month break, I chose to come back. I knew I was really good and I knew what I could do. At the same time, I wasn't quite sure whether I wanted to do it. Quick to live action, Tyler ripping this heat right now. She would, you know, show up to events in her tracksuit pants and a t-shirt because that's what she felt comfortable in. There was a lot of shadow boxing and dancing to music. And then her post heat interviews were about, oh yeah, I'm just here having fun. I don't really care if I if I win or not. But she just had the perfect mix of natural talent. So she was just doing so well, always. At every event, she was doing well. For me, I was like, what are you doing? Like, come on. You know, um, but that worked for her, you know, like, she just wanted to have fun. 
even for myself, I would criticise it a bit because I was like, oh, Tyler, you're representing the whole sport of female surfing. So, um, you know, try and, and do it the best that you can. I wasn't going to budge because the world thought I could win a world title. I knew I could win a world title. I just knew that I wouldn't be able to handle everything that came along with it, holding that position. In 2015, she had her worst year on tour and it was just, it was painful to watch. To see her win one week and then come second last the next just showed to me that there was evidence of self-sabotage. I'd reached that point where winning or losing didn't affect me in a, on an emotional level. I would be there just going, I work so hard to like get all these things right and you just like, eh, I don't care. She would pick up a board and be like, this one's pretty good and go out and surf it. Honestly, she didn't know a single thing about surfboards. I realise that I know nothing about my sport in a lot of ways. And then someone mentioned, they heard that I said I don't care. They just said it's far greater for the human to care than not to care. I sat back and was like, hmm, you know what, that's a fair point. But it's a, it's a fair point. What made it really clear to me was when she lost to Carissa Moore in Trestles. This is about as close as it gets. We were both out of the water and they were taking their time to deliver the scores. They make the decision. The last score for Tyler Wright, a 4-9-3. It's not enough. And I didn't get the score. On a moment where she could have gone all the way in this contest. She came in and she, she cried. And that was the first time that I actually saw her ever care. I was like, hang on, something, something, something just clicked. I was almost relieved when I started crying. I could feel it in me, the curiosity and the learning side and that intrigue in my sport and something that I used to love and take so much joy out of come back. Yeah, it was, I'm not gonna lie, that's, it's been the hardest one ever, so. I put such a hold on it for such a long time that when it did come back, it was, yeah, it was like, oh. You know, that was the kind of first step of me opening up to caring about surfing again. And here we go, a nice looking way for Tyler Wright. A month later, I was in France, and yeah, I made it all the way to the final. The 2015 Roxy Pro Champion, Tyler Wright from Australia. She stood up, she won that event. And her brother Owen, he'll be the first in there. Just watching her surf that event was just, yeah, different Tyler and um, very impressive to see. You know, I've been in a state of like confusion on what's going on, but um, I finally realised the difference between someone that doesn't care and someone that cares. And I care. You know, Owen, he just said to me, welcome back. The event in France was the second last event of the year, and then Hawaii was the last stop. Tyler was staying with Owen in the Rip Keltine house in Hawaii. Owen was a part of the world title race. Yeah, just really going for it. Pipe, I felt like it's one of my strongest events, and I felt really on form. I think the second most challenging wave in the world would be Pipeline. It comes in from really deep water, it hits the shallow reef, and it just barrels. I've actually paddled out and gone to duck dive and all the water's drained out from underneath me and my knuckles have literally buried into the reef and there's nowhere to go when you've got 10 foot of whitewash coming down on you. You've just got to take it on the head. I mean, the surf was giant, absolutely giant. and. 
You always see the guys out there, especially Owen. It'll be huge and he will just paddle out. So the day before Pipeline started, the boys were out for a warm-up surf. Tyler had a chance to go home or stay, and I was like, I feel like I'm going really good, Tyler. Like, you got to stay. Like, something's going to happen. I feel it. Like, some don't know what it is. Like, you got to stay. Owen and I ran out together, and because Owen and I surfed differently, I went straight out the back, and Owen sat, you know, Riding the heaviest part. When the next wave came, he was probably about 10 feet in front of me, and we both just duck dived it. And, you know, I got ragdolled and shaken around a fair bit. As I came up, I didn't see him. I was like, hang on. And I looked back, and he was 20 feet behind me. I didn't really think anything of it. I just thought, oh, maybe he just got stuck in the wrong spot or something like that. And we both walked up the beach together. He seemed perfectly fine. I was talking to him in his wetsuit, and he's like, oh, I just got so flogged, Ty. I just, yeah, I just got so flogged. When you're an athlete in a world title race, like, there's so much adrenaline and pressure, and you'd think, well, yeah, fair enough, you are tired. This is it, right? This is the end of the year. It all comes down to this. He went to bed, no one really thought anything of it, and he'd slept until about lunchtime. I was just out in front, and I saw one of Rick Curl's photographers run past. On the way back, he, he grabbed me and just said, you need to go see your brother now. He just couldn't move. His body was seemed like it was paralysed. You can tell in his eyes, my brother never looks panicked. He's always been very calm, collected under most situations and in his eyes, his eyes is like mm, the scariest thing that I've ever seen. I could see that she was totally freaked out and I was just, you know, just just held her and just like, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. You know, we'll focus on all the positives right now. Words that I absolutely needed to hear at that time and, you know, I was, I had to handle it. So I went into, I got to handle this situation. They then transferred him to the major hospital in town in Hawaii. And they diagnosed him with a traumatic brain injury and a minor brain bleed. For the next two weeks, she didn't leave his side. She was first on the scene in the family, so she was like, all right, this is how it's going to go. She was adamant that everything had to go through her, and that's, that's, a, that's a lot to take on, you know, for any person. Seeing your brother on a hospital bed, not being able to talk or move his legs or his arms, that was definitely a, that was definitely a tough one. I understood what you know, a true pressure situation was in that time. That again is just where the balance comes with those two. It's like a seesaw and they just keep helping each other, whoever needs it at, at any one point in time. Through December, then it started, you know, going into January and February and she wasn't surfing. She just totally forgot about herself, you know, unselfishly. She was just, I'm here for Owen and that's it. You know, I was at crossroads a lot of the time because I could have easily said, oh, I'm pulling out of the 2016 season to look after Owen. Wouldn't have had a problem with that. I would have done it. Though I felt at that time I needed it. Yeah, I also felt the family needed it. See how there's half a gutter here? Yeah. It's like it runs into that and then rides right off the back of it. Yeah, yeah. But he scores anyway, really. In January, I had a conversation with Owen about working with the coach. Do you reckon there's blue bottles? No, you'd be right. Great. Never blue bottles. We yeah. had about a month together before the, the World Tour season got started. I was concerned that she wasn't going to start the year fully prepared and, and I kind of accepted that because I didn't want her to, to do any worse of a job with looking after Owen. 
Tyler with a healthy looking wall and a lot of speed. Tyler came out 2016 Gold Coast and won the first event of the year in blazing form. Big moment for Tyler, your 2016 Roxy Pro Gold Coast champion. You could see it from day one that Tyler had it written across her face, the world title. Because of how hectic a scene it is at the contest site, we thought it best that Owen didn't come near it. Because it was so fresh off his axe, he couldn't even drive it. He struggling to go through the basic movements every day, getting to his feet and walking around and things, let alone being an event with, you know, thousands of people. I was on Mikey's and Tim's shoulders being chaired up the beach and the security guard, he grabbed my hand and said, look up. Now she spots her brother Owen and gives him a salute. What an amazing effort from Tyler to take over this lineup. An emotional moment. I follow Tyler. Head injury, no head injury. Just watching her compete and things like that, it just always means so much to me, so. I had a tear just run down my face. For her to go through everything that she did up until that point, it was like, wow. You know, it showed the strength of, of what she has. Tyler Wright lifts that trophy up high. Tyler winning the first event of the year at Snapper was just one win out of 10 events. Both our competitors are with just over five minutes remaining, and Courtney's going to be a solid chance. To finish the year on top and to finish world champion, you've got to have the most amount of points at the end of the year. Glenn Hall would be loving this. Tyler Wright on the hunt for a backup score now. What she focused on as it got closer and closer to the pointy end of the tour was learning. Now world number one on the Jeep leaderboard. So she didn't even get overwhelmed or swept up in the whole world title race and what her competitors are doing and how close they were and whether she had enough points to win. What about the hunger for the world title? You still got that in you? Oh, definitely, you know, it's, it's more about just weight by weight. So Tyler moves into France with a pretty healthy lead. There were numerous scenarios of what could happen with Tyler and her nearest rival, Courtney Connelogue. But there was one possibility that was completely in Tyler's control, and that was that if she won the event, she won the world title. I asked my team at the start of the event, what do I have to do? And they just go, you have to win. That was it, it was never talked of again. Tyler won her semi-final in France. I'm going straight to the shower. Yeah, that's right. And then as she was leaving the water, Courtney Connolly was paddling out for her semi-final. Tyler Wright's destiny is in the hands of that lady on screen. Tyler, she still didn't know the points scenarios that were going down. Everything was kind of really normal when I sat down and took a minute to myself to calm myself down and kind of center myself again for my next heat. With Courtney's semi-final in the water, all of Tyler's team, we all knew what, what the scenario was. And if, if Courtney lost his semi-final, Tyler had won a first world title. So it was hard to hide, but it was my role to keep telling Tyler that nothing's happening. You've got another heat to win. It's not done yet. No, no. Yeah. Five minutes, five minutes. I walked back down the beach to go win the final. Pete, we're all waiting on the score. Judges are going to lock it in now. It's going to come in at a 7.77. Pete, it's not, not enough. enough. I ran up the sand dunes and I couldn't see her anywhere. And then I looked up into this path and here comes Tyler. She's like a boxer. She's got her hoodie on. She's got a water bottle and she's just like, has no idea that she's about to be the world champion. <laughs> I won. Five seconds. Congratulations. You're the 2016 women's champion. How's that feel? Feels pretty good. <laughs> 
last year was such a, a hectic year and so many things happened this year and Owen and my family and my mum and I just love them so much. <laughs> my brothers and I were at home watching the webcast online. I think we jumped up and down and screamed and screamed and screamed and screamed to like, oh, it was just the best moment ever. After I won the world title, I went out in the final with my brother's number on. And she stood up goofy foot, which is the opposite stance to what hers is. No one's is a goofy foot stance. And I was like, what's she doing? Like, she's tripping. <laughs> and, then like, and then I looked and I was like, oh, that's my jersey. I remember crying and being like, oh, that's really awesome. So, yeah, that was a really cool moment. It was really a celebrating moment that I could share with everybody that was watching from Australia, from my family, and they know what that number means, they know who wears that number, and they know what he means to all of us. Welcome back to the Gold Coast of Australia. You're watching the Quicksilver Pro, the first stop of the World Surf League Championship Tour as we're celebrating the comeback for Owen Wright. No one's doing very well. You know, you read people with consecutive concussions or similar cases to Owen. Their stories are all incredible because how hard they've had to fight to remain who they are. Making a big decision to come back to the tour this year, and he's in fine form. Ah! Owen's been preparing. It's amazing how he's just come together in the last really two to three weeks. I'm so stoked just to see him back out in the water surfing. To have family like I do, it's we're all so close that nothing really needs to be said. You know, it's in our hugs. It's already felt. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. What an emotional win right there for Owen Wright. Oh, my goodness. To do the impossible, to come back to the top stage. Owen Wright is the champion of the Quicksilver Pro. I confronted every fear of getting back into it, you know, and uh, to what pretty much took me out and could have taken me out forever. So, oh, I'm over the moon and uh, I'm just so stoked. Steady up. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs>